We're looking at an interesting counterbalance Mark puts here in his Gospel, uh, next to the point he's been retelling in the Transfiguration. So Mark's the great storyteller, right? He really goes for the storytelling thing in a big way. If you look at the number of words that Matthew and Luke use to recount this tale, and then look at the number of words Mark uses. Mark, Mark goes to town, okay? He's about three times as many as, as used, I think, in Luke. He uses a lot of words to recount this story. He's making the storyline the issue. And you've got to look at the storyline Mark pursues to get the point uh, very often in Mark's Gospel. So here's, here's how it goes. <clears throat> First act of Mark's Gospel shows that in Jesus the Kingdom of God has come. And it does that through all sorts of means we know about. And that first act of Mark's Gospel, it ends where Peter identifies Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Yeah? And the second act opens with Jesus warning the disciples as to what sort of Messiah he's going to be. If they're going to be following him, they're going to be following a crucified Messiah who walks the way of the cross. People ain't going to cheer very much. <clears throat> he's going to be rejected, suffer, die, and be raised. And those who follow him, follow him in that way. So the question arises, how should you persevere in doing that? Because that sounds like it isn't going to be easy. How do you persevere? Well, we saw last time Mark 9, 1 to 13, not by gritting your teeth, but by directing your gaze at the glorified Son of Man in glory. Yeah? Fixing your eyes, keeping your vision on the resurrected, glorified Messiah in glory. And Jesus gives some of his followers that vision. But the danger is that that sort of thing can lead to over confidence. Trouble with human beings is you encourage them and it's not long till they're self-confident not God-confident. Does that make sense? Well it may or may not make sense but it's, it's what you get out of human hearts isn't it? This is the trouble with us. We become, we can easily become overconfident and the trouble then is that <clears throat> you still need to meet your challenges trusting him. There's the challenge of it. To be encouraged but still to hold on to our complete reliance, not on ourselves but on him. Is that a, is that a, a horse that is now dead and I flogged it or uh, is that making sense? It's making sense. We need to grasp that. That's what today is about. Because today in the account that Mark gives us in Mark 9 14 to 29, the disciples apparently exercising their faith seems not to work. Jesus is preparing his followers. Mark is preparing those believers in Rome facing serious persecution. He's preparing them for that day when they seem to exercise faith and it seems not to work. Is that making sense? Is that relevant? This is why I spend a lot of time in the introduction, because, because then we, we, oh yeah, oh that makes sense. The persecuted readers of Mark's Gospel, as well as the disciples who are present for this event, are going to need to know how to deal with stuff like that, because there are times when faith and following a crucified Messiah, Messiah seems not to work, seems not to pay. And certainly in this particular moment, these disciples are up against what is beyond them. This little boy is demonised, beyond, he's beyond control, it, they can't do a thing with him. That's the whole point. It's beyond our control, we're at our wit's end. That sort of thing, of course, characterised the story in Act 1 up until Chapter 8, where the evidence that Jesus is the King who has come into his kingdom, it, it, it's sort of presented in one miracle after another as he deals with the most impossible of problems faced by the people of the day. Jesus does the things, meets the problems that were absolutely beyond the resources of all of them. He defeats the forces of chaos in creation, manifested in nature, storms at sea and stuff like that. Ever been in a storm at sea? Pfft, wow, the power of that, you can't do anything with it, you know? It's more than us, it's bigger than us, we can't deal with it. Manifested in incurable sickness, paralysis, deafness. Blindness, those things that the people of the day had no answer to. And in the forces of cosmic chaos in the fallen creation, the gathering demoniac springs most obviously to mind. They bound him with many chains and he still snapped them. They couldn't do a thing with him. Beyond us, you see. Jesus is the one who can deal with the things that are beyond us. 
because he's the king come in his kingdom as proclaimed from 1 from 15 onwards now once the disciples have recognized that jesus is that the Mes that messiah in mark's gospel the repeated miracles making the point proving the point that he is the king messiah come in his kingdom the miracles virtually cease they virtually cease and now he's teaching them what sort of messiah and how to follow there are some small exceptions there there are two healings of blind people that frame jesus's trip to jerusalem like the people in jerusalem they're supposed to be at the heart of the spiritual thing but they're blind to the things of god and there are those two healings of blind people either side of that there's um, the, the cursing of the fig tree but that's more a symbolic act to show that israel was god's fruitful tree but didn't bear fruit so it's going to perish god's going to cut it off of the roots start again graft in to the old rootstock and then there's this one <clears throat> there's this miracle of this boy who is demonized that jesus has to step in and sort out but even this miracle is presented to us less as a miracle that jesus does and more as a miracle that his followers fail to do do you see the point what sets this narrative apart is that it concentrates on the miracle the disciples fail to do and their questioning of jesus as to why they thought they were exercising faith they thought they were doing what he told them to do mark 3 and mark 6 he says go cast out demons they went they did why hasn't this worked yes they must look up to the glorified son of man but that by no means allows them to presume on their god nor does it vitiate the need to moment by moment rely on the well-maintained state of their self-abandonment and trust placed in him to do these things that only he can do and that seems to be where it's all gone wrong that seems to be the point we're being taught in this curious event the mysterious event of the demons that refuse to come out to be clear then at the surface level this story is all about failing to cast out demons by not getting the procedure right but that is not what jesus is saying it is not what the point of this incident is because time and time again he says it's down to your faith in me i do this you trust in me you're not able you rely on me because you're not and that's the second point you see you've got keeping the vision clear but also keep that humble dependence on god clear if you're going to ever persevere in following him in the way of the cross